What's up guys, how y'all doing today? So today's an interesting day. I'm actually visiting a friend. Um, you probably remember him from my other video I did, Cameron and Dora. And I'm going to their apartment and I'm gonna do an apartment tour with them. So they live in a very nice apartment complex in Robleo. And we're gonna go check out the apartment, show how much it costs, that kind of stuff. So you guys can get an idea uh, what an apartment looks like in that area, okay? Another thing I wanted to show y'all is how much money I take with me in these kind of situations. So I have with me 103,000 pesos in my pocket. But the way I do it is I always like to have at least 150,000 peso, okay? And I have three 20,000 pesos. And I have, let me see here, I got one 5,000 pesos and three 2,000 pesos. And the reason why I like doing that is because one, we're going, I'm going to his house. I'm thinking I'm going to eat there. We're not going to go out to eat, so I'm not bringing that much money. But this is enough money just in case we are going to go out to eat or order a delivery. I have enough to share or to pay for it. Also, I have enough to, for my taxi right there and my taxi right back, which is not going to be more than 10,000, 12,000 pesos. Okay. And also, I broke it up in smaller bills because, like I said in other videos, you don't want to pay with a 50,000 peso bill to like a taxi driver because that's going to take all his change away he's not going to like that right but i always carry the 50,000 peso because when i was younger my dad told me one time david when you go out always have a hundred dollar bill on you just in case because you never know what would happen you know you might need the cash money to break or whatever so that fifty thousand dollar peso is like my hundred dollar bill like what my dad used to tell me so i always carry that with me at least one or two but yeah we're heading in a taxi. Uh, that's a taxi metro up there. Right now it's at 6,222. I'm not sure if you can see that. But that's how you watch it. And when you get in a taxi, if you notice that they don't turn it on, just tell them, you know, turn on the taxi metro and they'll do it for you. Sometimes they forget. It's not like they're trying to rip you off or nothing. Um, and what's the other thing? Yeah, that's about it. So, actually, let me ask the taxi driver a question real quick. See if I answer this question. I'm kind of interested. Hey, disculpa. Was that in English or no? No, para nada. ¿Y qué hace usted cuando un extranjero sube el taxi y no habla español? ¿Cómo comunica? Ah, yo le eh, hablo por ayudar a uno. Está escribiendo la dirección y pone el GPS. Ah, bueno. ¿Y todos los taxis ya tienen GPS? Todos, Ah, muy bien. Entonces, ¿y qué hay? Hay unos que traen aquí de celular, está en la. Ah, muy bien. Y acá todos los, pues todos los taxistas son honestos. Es lo que yo, yo di cuenta que, que la gente son muy honestos acá. Aquí me dicen sí. Sí, claro. Sí, 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 sí. No como en Bogotá. Bogotá sí tiene muy mala fama. <ríe> sí, los taxistas. Porque los pueden dar muchas vueltas. Claro. Sí. Y acá no. Yo ya llevo cinco años acá y, y todo bien. No, no, sí. Sí, sí, claro. Sí, siempre. Eso solo me pasó una vez. Todos esos cinco años acá, una vez que me trato de hacer vueltas, pero no. So I asked him. I don't know if you guys understood Spanish, but I asked him, what does he do? If, at first I asked him if he speaks English. He says no. And I said, what does he do when a foreigner comes in a taxi who doesn't speak any Spanish? And he said that most all taxis now have GPS on their cell phones and the foreigner will just write down the address, give it to him to plug into the GPS and make sure he gets there. And I also said, uh, that's great. And, and plus here in Medellin, most, the majority of taxis are honest. They're not gonna try to take you for a, a trip. They're, and he even mentioned there might be that one guy who does it, but the majority, super honest. Anyways. And I made a comment about Bogota because in Bogota I've been ripped off a few times, actually many times in Bogota by taxi drivers. So if you got if you're a taxi driver in Bogota watching this right now, come on now. You know, comment below, let me know if I'm wrong. Let me, let me know if we're wrong. But anyways, y'all stay tuned. I'll come back to y'all when I'm at the apartment complex. I can show you the apartment tour. Alright. Alright guys, so I got off the taxi a little bit further than I should have, but I'm walking. It's only a couple blocks to walk. But this is Robleo. You can see. It's a lot of new development, a lot of uh, apartments being built here. Uh, this area, I'm not sure if it's that walkable to tell you the truth. I think you need a, a car, you're gonna take a lot of taxis living here. 
but if you like being in this kind of area with these new buildings this is a good place and it's safe here it's real safe in this area in this part of Robledo but uh yep I found the building all right I'll be with y'all in a bit all right guys so now I'm walking I got through the, the doorman the security uh buildings like this have a lot of security and doorman usually when you come to visit somebody you need to know their name uh, and their apartment number and then they call the apartment and they ask the, the person who owns the apartment can, uh, David Martinez is here to visit you do you want to go up and then of course my friend said yes and I'm going up and here's a garage so a lot of apartments have the garage right here and we walk through to get to the elevator and we go to his apartment so I'll be right back with you oh yeah all right getting off the elevator Dose got these are 214 I forget, I forget which way it was let's see let's see where it's at it's 250 212 I think I'm going the wrong wrong direction here 218 oh there he is what's up my man what's up, brother? How are yeah you? We're, okay so he's in the apartment uh, he's on the 12th floor so we gotta go have an awesome view and let's check it out i'll take off my face mask i think it's all good all good Bienvenidos yeah casa. cameron what's up what's that? good man how you been very nice. good thank you well just do the little tour yeah, real quick sure so. sure so this is cameron's apartment with his uh girl dora so we got a kitchen right here right and the washing machine and everything's over here hot water heater hot water heater because he likes to have hot showers <laughs> yep right there and we come over here dora como estas hello bien bien <laughs> eh, el toque de col eso hey eh, got this got this uh living room the eating area the balcony and we got the awesome view over here guys check it out we got the pool which we're not allowed to go in right now but it's all good. Maybe in the future we got some kids area. Got a soccer area. Oof, the barbecue pits right over there. You see them? Nice, and look at this view guys, check it out. Check it out, how many bedrooms are here again? Three. Three bedrooms. Yeah, but this is, you know, Medellin and the city, so they're kind of small. Right, so this is not American. We're not in America right now, we're in Colombia, and Colombia tends to have smaller things. Yeah, yeah. Everything's smaller. So we got a bathroom. You, you guys don't mind if I go over? Yeah, yeah, sweet. All right. All right. We're <laughs> there. We go. So we got the the bathroom here, guys, and we got let's see a little. Looks like a work study. I like that. That's cool. We've got a bedroom here. I guess for when the when the kids come to visit, it's very nice. We got another bedroom here. Hola, maquillaje, maquillaje. Yes. <laughs> and we got the main bedroom here. Beautiful. I love it. It looks like you got the bathroom. The main bathroom. So there you go, guys. Let's find out uh, how much does it cost for a month. So what what you paying per month? Uh, Let's camera? see. Um, four, probably about four. It's one point five million pesos. One point five million pesos. So four ten, four twenty, always under four fifty. Because the the, the the money's always changing. Like the the currency rate is always going up or down. So like at one point it was at four thousand two hundred. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Was and we were living large. Three eighty a month. We were living large, man. But now it's at like three thousand six hundred fifty. So that's why I like to say the how much the pesos is. Come on. It's that's why I like to say how much the pesos is. Like you're paying what was it one million? One five. 1.5 million pesos that way if you guys are seeing this like in a year or two years from now you just do you look at the conversion on Google and just do the change like do the math but right now you're paying about what was it for it's I, I, I like 425 a month just call it that 425 a month and man. then you throw in all of the you know electricity the water all the amenities of phone internet uh -huh. cable about another hundred so an extra hundred bucks on that 450 yeah, so, so 550. 550 a month and that's everything paid for. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. And of course, you know, we don't have heating and we don't have air conditioning. Uh-huh. So that definitely helps right there. You know? Oh, you don't have air conditioning? Nah, yeah, right here. So a lot of people, that's a good point. A lot of people always commenting, uh, is there air conditioning in the, in the houses and the apartments? Or is that common to have? Now, to answer that question, first of all, no, it's not common. I would say it's definitely not common. But there are options where you can get air conditioning. 
For I, sure. I see. I see more air conditioning in the in the in the in the houses because you know, look, I'm on the 12th floor. I got a grill. I got a breeze. Yeah, oh, there's no time. there's no need for air conditioning. No need for air the breeze. Right. I mean, basically, this door never closes. Think of this place as just a fancy tent or a treehouse. A treehouse. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, the door never closes. Yeah. Windows are always open. Yeah. You don't even feel the window. It's so benign. You don't even feel hot or cold. You just don't feel anything. It's so good. So he's from Texas, as you can tell from the shirt. And uh, what, part, what part? Galveston, Galveston right? You're right, right Galveston. south of Houston. Yeah. yeah so in Houston, too. So. Houston's super free. Super hot, humid. And I'm from Houston, so this for us is beautiful. Who knows? Maybe some people up north might think this is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. The the press, you see, I got my fan right there. There's a fan. There we go. So I always tell people, people use their oh, fans. Right I have the old school fan, the kind with the blades that go like this, you know, <laughs> and it works. It's fine, it's you know. You it's all you need, really. It's all you need. And then your body acclimates. You just get used to it. So there you go. But if you want an AC, you can always buy an AC or you can get an apartment with an AC. It's just a little bit harder to find. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, guys. I might come back to you all with more information. All right, guys, so we were just talking, Cameron and I, uh, about real estate and about rent and that kind of stuff. And he just went off a rant that I thought was very interesting, what he was talking about. And I thought it was so interesting that you guys might want to listen to it as well. Because sometimes you guys ask me in comments uh, to rent or to buy. All right, so let's, let's see what Cameron's uh, opinion is on this. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. So my thoughts, like I explained to Dave, is that this apartment cost me roughly $5,000 a year to rent. Um, you can buy one of these apartments for one hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, depending on what building. So I'm paying five thousand dollars a year on rent. You don't have mortgages down here, so if you buy, you're killing all your capital. That's capital just going to be sitting in these walls. Now the great thing is, after two or three years, when I'm tired of this apartment or this neighborhood, this building, I can just go rent another apartment somewhere in a brand new building, just finished up with newer amenities, fresher apartment. And still only pay about you know five maybe six thousand dollars a year. No, yeah, six thousand dollars a year. Right. Yeah. So you add that over the twenty year period that you pay. If I spend a hundred thousand to buy this, in twenty years I got an old apartment. Right. That I can't really do anything with because we're building so many new apartments still, and probably will do so in here in Medellin for a while. It just doesn't make good sense to buy. I'd rather keep upgrading my apartments for the same amount of money and not burn up a hundred. $130,000 in, in cash. Right, because like he made a comment that that $130,000 is paying $5,000 here a year, more or less. Uh, to get to that $130,000, $120,000, what it was, that's like 24 years, right? So him, instead of being 24 years in the same apartment he bought, he's able to switch around and move around. And rent here is so cheap. It's so like, cheap. like he was mentioning that one of his friends stayed in one of the nicest um, apartments here in Medellin. I think it's called Energy Building, I'm not sure. but. He was paying like 650 bucks. Was that still pretty cheap? Cheap, like the, oh gosh. The nicer ones, you uh, know? This was an upscale, I mean, incredible, I mean, incredible view. Mm -hmm. 23 floors, pool at the top. I mean, awesome apartment. So it's awesome. a little caveat, uh, 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 a good reason to buy a property is possibly somebody wants to get a long-term visa, they want to you know, buy a property, get that visa, but like what I mentioned before with my other, my way, I got my visa, I, I got a business visa. Instead of having to, uh, to invest, I think it's like $150,000 in real estate to get the visa, uh, you can start a business and, and just invest, I think it's like 25000 And that 25000 all you have to do is deposit into a business account. And then of course, you have to pay the business taxes, that kind of stuff. But you get a good accountant that's gonna help you out and you're all good. And at the end of the day, if you wanna shut your business down, you still got that $25,000 in the bank account unless you invest in the business and you sell the business, whatever. But anyways, let us know what you think in the comments about uh, Cameron's rant that he went off on on, the, on the, his idea about that. I actually agree with him. I've told you guys in the past, if you guys are gonna come to Medellin, rent. And if you, ha if you absolutely wanna buy, rent first for a while, change the neighborhoods around, and if you had the door here, and, um, and see which, which areas you wanna buy. And then if you guys are interested in buying, just you know, comment below, let us know. And maybe we can, we, I can help you out. I'm not sure, but y'all stay, y'all take care. Stay tuned, okay? Okay, guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Dora some questions really quick about uh, the, her relationship uh, with an American, you know, and also I might ask Cameron as well about the, his relationship with the Colombian and being with the Colombian family. Uh, I find that kind of interesting. I, I think maybe you guys might find it interesting as well. So let's, let me ask questions in Spanish. And I'll do some translating uh, as she talks. Yeah. So, Dora. Eh, una pregunta para pa usted. Eh, 
ya estás con cámara, es un, un, un americano, sí. Eh, ¿Qué piensas de vivir pues acá en Colombia o allá en Estados Unidos? ¿Tú qué piensas sobre eso? Eh, ¿Moviendo a Estados Unidos? Or, ¿Tienes miedo o qué? Bueno, no, 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 de tener miedo no, porque mm. creo, o sea, tengo una persona bella, ya lo he conocido bien, Ajá. me voy segura. Ajá. Sí, dentro de lo normal, de lo que me, la, la seguridad que me brinda Cámara. Y nada, de, con la mente abierta de irme. No sé Ajá. qué vaya a pasar, si me vaya a gustar, o es. prefiera vivir acá en Colombia. Ajá. Siempre hemos hablado de eso. Ajá. Que no sé cómo será la vida ya, si, si prefiero vivir acá en Colombia. O que decida, no, no me quiero ir, no quiero ir más para Colombia, me quiero quedar acá. Ah, no sé, estoy a la expectativa de eso. Pero mente abierto. Mente abierta. Déjeme, no, no, no. déjeme traducir eso. Ok, so I asked her, uh, be in a relationship with an American, and of course the, there's always a chance that she might have to move to the States. Uh, how does she feel about that? And she said her answer was, uh, because she's with a guy that she loves, that she trusts, and that, that respects her, uh, to move to America wouldn't be that scary. Because I asked her, are you afraid? And said, wouldn't be that scary because I have Cameron. But at the same time, I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be like because she's never been there. And she's not sure if she would like it or she won't like it. Or maybe she'll love it. She not, might not want to come back to Colombia. Or maybe she'll want to come back to Colombia. So she doesn't know. So it's all about just going and, and trying out. They talked quite a bit about this. And uh, I want to ask her real quick. I'll tell you all the question first and I'll ask her if it makes it easier. I want to ask her uh, what she thinks most Colombian women think. Like, or most w Colombians wanting to go to, Colum uh, to America, find an American man and move to the States. Or do most Colombians want to stay here in Colombia because of family? Okay, mi pregunta es, la, la mayoría de las, de las colombianas, o los colombianos, quien sea, pero más las mujeres acá en Colombia, ¿qué, qué piensan ellas? Como, ¿Qué crees que piensan ellas? ¿Que, ¿Que quieren conocer un americano y ir a Estados Unidos? ¿O que ellos quieren mejor quedarse en su país con su familia? No, yo pienso que la mayoría de las mujeres tienen el sueño americano de conocer pues, el gringo, el extranjero, mm. e irse para otro país a, a vivir. Uh -huh. Yo creo que la mayoría de las personas piensan más bien de irse. De irse. Sí. Ok. Sí. So, uh, you already heard my question. And her answer was, she thinks that the majority of, of, of people, of the women here, have that American dream to meet a foreigner, to move to a different country, and to, to go that route. But I'm about to ask her a question. If she knows of anybody who's gone to the States, like one of her friends or family member Colombians who have gone and actually that's, that dream wasn't as what, she, what they expected and then wanted to come home. So let me ask that question. <laughs> so, entonces, tú conoces, tú, me acabas de decir que, que tú crees que la mayoría tiene ese sueño, pero tú conoces a alguien, un, un familiar, una amiga, eh, quien sí fue, sí, sí fueron, pero cuando llegaron dijeron que, ay no, la verdad no es, no es un sueño y ya, ya quiero mi, mi casa, quiero Colombia, quiero mi familia. ¿Tú conoces a alguien de qué pasó? No, no conozco ese caso, nunca ah. he escuchado ese caso de alguien, no sé, todo el que se va quiere quedarse y eh, quiere, uh -huh. sí. Yo siempre he pensado, yo no sé qué pensaré, si irme o quedarme, porque la verdad que, que por mi edad, yo ya estoy muy acostumbrada a Colombia, uh -huh. eh, pero tengo la mente abierta de ¿Tú? experimentar bueno, las cosas. Y acabo de decir que todos que fueron quieren quedarse, entonces sí conoces gente que sí se fueron, pero todos que tú conoces se fueron y se, se están felices. Sí, están felices, sí. Ah, muy sí, interesante. Sí. So I asked her that question uh, that I let you guys know if anybody went and wanted to come back and she says no, never. Everybody she's known who's gone has been happy and they wanted to stay. So that's actually interesting because I've heard opposite. I've heard opposite. So this is good hearing from her and her experience with her friends or family members. And what was the last thing she said? Que si conozco la mayoría de las personas se quieren quedar de la Yeah. Y por las oportunidades que, que, que de todas maneras se dan sí. en, en otros países que no, que no hay acá. 
Bueno, and, and of course for the opportunities in the States. So my next question is, uh, what can she recommend us, or you guys, I already have a girlfriend, uh, to look, what to look out for, for a good girl, an honest woman, that, I, that she is, obviously she is with Cameron, I see the relationship, they have a great relationship, uh, to recommend to find a good honest woman and also how to, to spot uh, maybe a, a woman that's just interested in the visa or the, the opportunity and not interested in you. Okay, so I'm gonna ask that question, see what she says. <laughs> bueno, Laura, eh, mi próxima pregunta es uh, ¿cómo, qué, qué, ¿qué pueden recomendar a la, a la gente que está viendo ese video? Porque yo, yo ya tengo un novio, entonces para mí es... Yeah. Pero para la gente que quieren venir acá a Colombia y encontrar una mujer, ¿qué le pueden recomendar a cómo encontrar una mujer buena? Y también, ¿cómo mm, ver que es una mujer mala, como interesada? ¿Me entiendes? La verdad que no sé, no sé qué recomendarle. Primero ¿Qué la buena, la, la mujer es buena. La mujer es buena. Ah. Bueno, no sé, que miren a ver los sentimientos, que conozcan su entorno, que conozcan, que conozcan un poco de su entorno y de su vida. Igual no quiere decir que porque la chica no quiero menospreciar a ninguna mujer, que porque es una chica, una prepa o una, porque también en medio de ese entorno se puede conseguir mujeres buenas, mm. creo yo, pero es de conocer y los sentimientos a, la, a cada mujer, mm -hmm. a cada mujer. Porque cada, cada persona es un mundo y yo no puedo decir, es que todas las mujeres colombianas quieren un extranjero para estafarlo, porque no es así, hay mujeres Exacto. de muy buenos sentimientos, Ajá. y que ellos vean, porque es que tienen que abrir más los ojos, a qué se le, a qué se le arrima, no sé, a una chica que quiere, cuáles son sus planes, Ajá. sus expectativas, que la, eso, que la conocen que, bien, que la conozcan bien, que tomen su tiempo, sí. conocer a la mujer, sí. no tener tanto prisa, sí. eh, ok, es lo que estás diciendo, más o menos, algo así, pero también para uno saber si una persona es buena o es mala, no se necesita de mucho tiempo. No, uh -uh. no y de que una relación funcione o no funcione, tampoco se necesita de mucho tiempo, uh -huh. porque fue mi caso, nosotros nos conocimos muy rápido y eso fue una conexión rápida. Uh -huh. Todos los casos son diferentes. Exacto. Es de conocer, o sea, que tengan esa malicia de conocer no sé, los corazones, una muy persona complicado. muy complicada, muy complicado. porque yo no puedo decir que, que es que todas las mujeres van a hacerle maldad a un extranjero. Una cosa que ustedes hicieron y era Cameron tenía un amigo, que tenía una amiga que ellos conocieron juntos y ella era tu amiga, era. entonces conociendo entre gente, entre personas confiados. Sí, Esa es como una forma más seguro. Es una seguro. forma, o sea, es una cadena. O sea, nosotros nos conocimos por medio de un amigo, de una amiga, de una amiga mía, de un amigo de él, uh -huh. que ya había venido antes a Entonces, ese es, puede ser una, es un, medio, un, sí, un ejemplo de, 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 de encontrar una mujer buena. Exacto. Ah, bueno. Muy bien. Entonces voy a explicar eso en inglés, voy a tratar de explicar todo eso en inglés. <laughs> voy a ser como más corto. <laughs> so what she said in the beginning was, it's so difficult to, to know, you know, like uh, everybody's different, every, every person has their own world. So for her to say exactly this, this and that is so difficult for her to do, which I, I can understand and I appreciate that. So I won't pressure her more to, to dig it out of her, right? But uh, in the end, we ended the result with uh, their example, they did meet quick, they did have a relationship pretty quick, but Cameron had a friend who had a girlfriend, or a friend that's a girl, who invited Dora, which was her friend. So mutual connection, mutual friendships was one, a great way to, to kind of make sure that, not make sure, but to find a good girl. That's a, that's a great way to find a good girl. Now there's many other ways to find good girls, of course. And that she also made a comment, not all Colombian women want to just, uh, meet a guy and scam them. Of course not. There's plenty of good women here and I've said that many times. But there are girls that you have to be careful. All are people, guys too, that try to get a relationship and scam the person. So anyways, that was my questions on the relationship side on for Dora. 
uh, anything that did you did you answer the question? I said yeah. anything. So any, anything to add, Cameron, on anything I asked about? You know, my thoughts are that if if a woman or a girl speaks English really well, to kind of be careful mm -hmm. because that's a pre plan That's thinking out that uh, you know I may want to go to America one day. I learn English. I'm either an American, and then they love me, and then I go. Uh, you know, so that's kind of some, some planning ahead. That would you give me a, a small check myself? Mm -hmm. Really, I have a woman that speaks no English because I know she's never spent a lot of time thinking about coming to the United States. Because if you have, and that's your goal and your plan, then you're going to learn English. Because what easier way to catch a guy who speaks English than to know his language? True. You know, that's a great. That's that's actually yeah, just a, just a weird, just a, you know, just something I thought about. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that if you if you are interested in in Colombian women and meeting, you need to actually be here. They're not going to date you. You're not going to roll into town spend three or four days with you and leave those aren't the women that you want mm. but if you come in here and you're serious about starting a life in Colombia then they're gonna be quite open to you and you find them like you do everywhere else the girl at the at the, at the grocery store uh, you know uh, at, at the soccer stadium just like you know natural meeting places and don't go on the internet mm -hmm. Medellin's not an internet place right it's a meet people place right a lot of social mixers here for the, the for the for the for the expats that are here, and a, a lot of the women here that may want to go to that, and that, that's how you meet the the doctors and the lawyers and you know the the, the normal girls that aren't don't have agenda. Right, great points, Cameron, and and I'll, I'll add to those points uh, about the speaking English. I, I agree on it in certain situations. So, for example, yes, there are situations where girls will have that agenda and learn English, but they're also the doctors, the lawyers, the girls that, that speak English because they're just educated and they're, they're you know. So it, it's, 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 that's, that's, that can happen. That, I understand his points. I've seen that in Ukraine as well. And about him mentioning the comment about coming here versus going on the internet. I've met so many girls, like my friends who are girls, who didn't even know what Tinder was. This was like five years ago or four years ago when I, when, at the time. So a lot of th people, Dora, tu conociste de, de Tinder antes? Tinder, no. Ah, she said, o sea, pero that? sí conocí una, ah. o sea, Tinder no, Colombia, Cupid conocí, okay. porque yo sí quería conocer a alguien. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So she knew the, the website Colombia Cupid, which was at, there you can, when I was on it five years ago, you could find good girls there. And also you can in Tinder, but anyways, a lot of, a lot of people here don't use applications. They go out and they meet people like Cameron's talking about. And there are businesses over here in Colombia and other countries that, cater towards single men they say you know we're gonna hook you up with a girl online she's gonna chat with you you pay us how much money per minute talking to her by messaging or whatever don't do that come on guys don't that's a rip-off that's a scam they're gonna have you come over here and, and, and have a party with a bunch of women all single no just come here as if you can spend longer period of time instead of just three days spend a month or two if you're able to get involved in groups make friends and then through that you'll meet the, you'll meet somebody. That's that's our advice today for relationships with Cameron and Dora. Any, anything else to add? Good. Yes. So we might walk around in a bit, go check out the grounds. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys that. We might go see some uh, views around the neighborhood. And uh, so you guys stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. Good. I got a question. Guys, I'm sorry. I said we we're gonna go for a walk, but we have some more interesting questions coming. So uh, the next question I want to ask Dora is this. Because she's had, she's had experience dating Colombian men, and now she's been with, uh, with Cameron for two years now, going on close. close to two years, so with an American man. So I want to ask her, what is the differences she sees in dating a Colombian guy versus an American guy? And of course, guys, this is her opinion. Uh, other people can have other, other experiences, so take it with a grain of salt. It's just, I find it interesting hearing it. I, before I even start YouTube, I would ask these silly questions anyways to people, just to, just to hear their thoughts, right? So, Let's see, let's see what she says. Bueno, Dora, eh, la pregunta. Usted ya tenía experiencia con colombianos como novios, ¿sí? Y ahora ya tienes experiencia con americano como novio, ¿sí? Entonces, la pregunta es, ¿cuál es la diferencia? Salir con un colombiano y salir con un americano. ¿Cuál, como las cosas que es buenos, que es malos, que te choca. Eh, yo, yo ya, dije, ya dije a la cámara, que esa es tu opinión, esa es tu experiencia, cada sí, quien es diferente. Cada quien, todas las opiniones son diferentes. Exacto, en tu experiencia diferente. Yo también diferente. Soy, soy las que pienso que no todo, es, no todo es igual, no todo es lo mismo. Exacto. Y no todo es lo mismo, 
Pues o sea, ay, sí. eh, los eh, colombianos. And the funny thing is, I didn't tell her this question before I asked it, so she's caught off the guard big time. Dale. Sí, y sí he tenido experiencia con los colombianos. Sí, con Ajá. los colombianos y tuve una relación con un colombiano. Y no tienes que decir nombres, no más. No, 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 no. Eh, pero me quedo con los americanos a mi forma de pensar. Mi experiencia con los colombianos no ha sido muy buena. ¿Y por qué? No quiero decir que, que los hombres colombianos sean malos con eso, mm. no, porque hay hombres colombianos muy buenos, muy buenos esposos, muy buenos novios. Claro. A mi forma de pensar o a, en mi experiencia no me ha ido muy bien con los colombianos. Me quedo con el americano porque para a, a, a mi experiencia, a mi relación, han sido más detallistas, más entregado a la relación y son más fieles. Ah, okay. Ese es el punto. Más sí. fieles. Eso. Ah. Me encanta. O sea, algo que, que me ha pasado que yo, o sea, y he tenido varias experiencias en, de ambos lados, porque también Ajá. tuve antes de Camero, tuve una relación con un, con un americano, una relación larga también. Ajá. Y me siento más segura en una relación con un americano a, a, a tranquilidad de, de infidelidad, a tranquilidad de que le dan esa tranquilidad a uno, pues, de que son fieles. Oh, bueno. Lo que no pasa con el hombre colombiano. Oh, bueno, ok. No todos, pero... No todos, porque hay hombres colombianos que son muy fieles. Son muy fieles. Sí, yo, yo los conozco, los conozco. Yo también. Bueno, déjeme explicar. In English. And th so what I asked her the question, you guys heard the answer to the question, and her answer was, with her experience, like she repeated many times, that it's her experience, her opinion, what's happened to her, because she said that she knows there are good Colombian men and faithful men out there, and, and she knows them, but the ones she's been with, uh, she's had bad experiences, all right? She didn't go into detail about that. Um, I tried to kind of dig it out, but she wouldn't go into too much detail. But she went straight to what it's like dating an American guy, and she loves the fact that, uh, and she's had, she's been with Cameron, and also before Cameron, she was with another American for a long, long relationship, so had two experiences. Uh, that what she, her experience was, uh, American men are more, the, de detallista, which means like, um, detail, like a detail oriented, like uh, I don't know, pick up a, a dish or, or or bring flowers. I'm not sure. Like details, like little details, right, about the relationship. Um, they're more cariñosos, de, de, de los americanos, sí, más, más cariñosos. No, bueno, más detallista, pero como en... Pero usted dice, eh, digo, detallista, ¿y qué más dijo? Y cariñosos o... Y fiel. Y fiel, y fiel, okay. fidelidad. So, she said, uh, more caring, okay, and, and faithful. And then she mentioned faithful like four times and she has hit it hard, like with a hammer. So I'm guessing her bad experience with her Colombian relationships was un, uh, being unfaithful, right? And her her experiences. Lo que estoy diciendo es que yo estoy yo pienso que la mala experiencia que usted tenía con sus colombianos era infidelidad. Es la infidelidad, sí, 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 no la infidelidad, porque y es que no y no generalizo, no con eso quiero decir que es que sean todos los colombianos. Obvio. No, oh. es mi caso, es mi caso personal. Claro. Pero, pero hay de todo. So, so she again she repeated it, um, so about there are Colombians who are faithful and that, but in her experience is unfaithful. And so with Cameron, with her other guys she was with as an American, the that trank, the tranquility that she got in the relationship, knowing that okay, this guy is faithful to me, she cares about me, he's 100 percent dedicated to me, it just makes her feel really good, right? But that's not, that's not saying all American men are good either. Because I know American men out there that are not faithful. Okay, so <laughs> don't y'all don't put yourselves on a pedestal, you know, <laughs> and, and thinking, yeah, that I'm American, I'm gonna go. No, there are some bad American men out there too, but they're good men as well. Okay, so good men in both countries. Uh, I my experience, I think faithfulness is more of a culture in the states versus yeah, here in right. Colombia, because here in Colombia, it's almost uh, protected. Like, uh, for example, if I'm a Colombian man and I have my friends here and I cheat on my wife and they know my wife and my wife asks them where I'm located, 
they're going to cover for me most most of the time most of the time here in Colombia in the states if I have friends and they find out and Cameron's it, it, yeah, no, no, my friends will not go over there right if they found out I'm cheating on my wife they knew my wife they like my wife first they'll say David what the hell are you doing why are you cheating on your wife right so that doesn't happen here as much as Colombia as it does in the states so that's the big cultural difference over there um, so yeah muy buenas respuestas muchas gracias Dora Sí, y, <ríe> y para las colombianas ahí, ahí que nunca he tenido experiencia con, uh, con americanos, ahí está, ahí tiene el, el opinión de Dora, obvio que no todos los americanos son buenos, hay americanos hombres malos, tienen mucho cuidado, ojo pues, uh, pero sí hay buenos, y también no colombianos, todos colombianos malos, hay buenos colombianos también, obvio, obvio, entonces, uh, los que, está, que hablan español, voy a, pre, voy a preguntar a Cameron que, qué le parece saliendo con una mujer colombiana con, uh, pa, comparado a una mujer de los Estados Unidos, ¿ok? So, uh, I don't need to tell you guys in English what I'm going to ask because you don't understand it. Cameron, so let's hear your side. Like, what's your experience? You've had experience dating, obviously, American women, and you've have, you have experience here dating a Colombian woman. What's your experience? Yeah, and of course being exposed to you know my my, my uh, sister-in-laws and just the friends that we've made. Uh, one thing I'll say for and it's culturally different and it's not slams anywhere that Colombian women tend to be more um, uh, catering to their to their men. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit that I mean, uh, and it's almost a 1950s and 60s style lifestyle that we have here as far as what goes on in the house uh, you know because I'm I pretty much I'm, you know I work I still have a job and I still do my work here and I get up in the morning and I start working and then Dora makes me my coffee she makes me my my, my, my breakfast she's cleaning the house I'm working you know very traditional like that she man my clothes always smell great my favorite I go to the barber <laughs> constantly nurturing and loving on me and I found that to be sort of a Colombian female thing. They're very, they're very, their man oriented. I mean, you're their man, you're theirs. And they're gonna make sure your stuff is top from top of your head to the bottom of your feet, literally. She scrubs the on the bottom of my feet. It's just incredible. Hmm. I've never been treated like this and I've loved all my ex-wives and my girlfriends. And you know, hello to all of you if you're watching. Not all of you, not that many, but it's just a different sort of thing. It's it's. It's sort of a, sort of addictive. I have to admit to uh -huh. be always just picked over. Yeah, it's good. I'm gonna explain that in Spanish real quick. Yeah. Okay, para la gente que está, está viendo en español, eh, lo, lo que dijo Cameron, yo le pregunté esa pregunta. Él le, le contó que eh, su experiencia con una colombiana es como como era en los Estados Unidos en los 50, 60, que él todavía trabaja. Eh, tiene su negocio, acá trabaja en la casa, levanta muy temprano y él comienza a trabajar y Dora se pone a, a hacer su café, a hacer su desayuno, él, ella se pone a limpiar, eh, se cuida mucho a él desde el pie hasta la cabeza, hasta, hasta que es, hace un pedicure en, uh -huh. en el pie y todo eso, entonces él se siente muy, muy consentido, ¿ok? Y esa es la diferencia muy grande que él ve acá con las colombianas contra los, los, las mujeres de los Estados Unidos porque acá es como otra vez en los 50 en los Estados Unidos que ese como se dice eh, un hombre es un hombre una mujer es una mujer y eh, los como se dice los roles son muy claros muy claros muy tradicional es lo que dijo Cameron vamos a ver eh, si quiere hablar sobre sus experiencias con, los, con las mujeres de Estados Unidos vamos a ver um, and do you want to uh, expound on your like the difference between like the states, or do, is that all you want no, to say? No, no, I just uh, that's just what I, I you know in my own experience, and and I know that uh, of course in my life I don't need an, a second income, mm -hmm. and so it's a different for me. Uh, you know, I'm sure that here in Colombia that you know a lot of both families work. I mean, both husband and wife will work, and I'm sure the husbands may you know do things around the house more more American style. For me here, I clean the kitchen. I'll do that. I don't. I hate to see her be, you know, always, you know, cleaning and doing things. I want to help mm -hmm. when I can, and I do, and I think she appreciates that, you know. But I don't know. It's just, you know, something I, I feel like I want to do, mm -hmm. to to try to recognize the contributions that she makes here, um, and of course, you know, I mean, she, all she has. And we have a saying in the house, 
chic. Ella gusta John Canta. If she likes it, I love it. So right. it's simple. You know, it's a simple rule of life. Keep happy wife, happy life. And so, you know, pretty down here is, is very affordable. Nails, hair, clothes, all of it. Right. It's a good look. Right. Enjoy it. Right. So you, you don't mind pampering her at all oh, because everything she does for you. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything. And, and, her, and her family. I mean, I love her mom. Uh -huh. We just renovated her mom's apartment. And, I was happy to, you know, contribute to that because, you know, they've been so good to me and adopted me and made me part of the family. I mean, uh -huh. it's fun. It's I walk in. I have no kids of my own, so I walk into, we go to a family gathering and we got babies and we got toddlers and we got 10-year-olds and we got teenagers and it's fun. It's uh -huh. entertaining and, and I'm, you know, Teal Gringo, so uh -huh. it's, it's Excellent. <laughs> Entonces voy a tratar de explicarle eso en español, todo eso. Pero eh, lo que dijo Cameron era eh, obvio: hay, hay familias acá en Colombia donde los dos, eh, la, la mujer, el, el hombre, los dos trabajan. Y obvio que la mujer no puede trabajar y también to, hacer todo de la casa. Entonces, obvio que los hombres también ayudan en la casa. Pero acá con ellos, él es que trabaja y ella, pues no, pues trabaja en la casa. Entonces, eh, por eso es su situación, pero al mismo tiempo Cameron no le gusta ver a ella haciendo todo, limpiando toda la casa sola, entonces a veces le gusta limpiar la, la cocina, uh, hacer un, una comida, todo eso. Y otra cosa, uh, creo que dijo, you, you're talking, oh, lo que dijo es uh, que también con su familia, que su familia es muy recibida de él, eh, los sobrinos, los nietos, eh, él no tiene hijos propios, entonces ahora ya tiene una familia entera que él llega, el, el tío Cameron llega y hay bebés, de, de, niños de 5 años, 10 años y todos aman a Cameron. Y la verdad, eh, yo, pues sí, yo vi eso cuando fui a visitar la, el apartamento, es como, él, él es el tío, pues, de, de Cameron. Entonces es lo que dijo él, más o menos, en, en, en inglés. Um, another thing I want to mention to you guys, is uh, what he mentioned about the, the kids that, that love him and everything. Uh, I want to toot his horn. He got them uh, an iPad from the States. He got an iPad as a gift to three of the kids. And those kids were so grateful, so grateful that one little, that one gift to three kids that they even sent him a video thanking him, right? And, and showing the, the iPad and like, oh, thank you, Tio Cameron. And, um, and I, thought, I thought to myself, wow, I have nephews and nieces, okay, and if I gave one gift to, to, for three of them to share, they'll be upset, they'll be fighting, right? I'm not sure if that's how, that's how it's over there with, with everybody over there watching it on the channel, but that's my experience in the States. And here in Colombia, they were so grateful for that one gift, it was beautiful, I loved it. Um, lo que acabo de decir en español, eh, Cameron eh, dio un regalo a, a sus sobrinos, eh, era tres sobrinos, eh, un iPad para tres uh, niños. Y ellos eran tan agradecidos de ese regalo, le, le mandó un video, llamada, diciendo gracias, gracias. Y yo, yo vi eso, yo, yo pensé que es tan hermoso, porque en los Estados Unidos, por ejemplo, yo tengo sobrinos, y si yo doy un regalo para tres sobrinos, no, eh, hubieran estar eh, enojados y peleando, pero acá estaban todos agradecidos, ese era tan hermoso para mí, para ver eso. Entonces, él es muy sorturo, uh, ganar una familia como esa es lo que yo creo <laughs> entonces so that so anything else to add it's all yeah todo bien eso fue muy bueno so that's it for the questions for today I think we're gonna go walk for a bit and see what happens um si es todo vamos a caminar a conocer más edificio chao alright guys so now we're outside walking around this little area and I didn't show y'all before but underneath the building a lot of little stores like coffee little stores so this people that live here have access to stuff right here as well and then the exit door is pretty close from here right you guys yeah. walk to exo right yeah exo is the supermarket in colombia one of the supermarkets yeah so we're gonna walk around show you guys this area uh it's super safe here cameron was talking telling me a moment ago that there's always uh security guards everywhere like his building has two security guards by itself and then there's always cops or something to walk around, so this area is very safe. And nighttime too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, 24/7.
So a lot of people ask, you know, is Colombia safe? And the answer is yes, depending where you're at, you know, and who you're with, right? So <laughs> here, it's safe. Down here, uh. we got more shops, and that's where the, my barber shop, the barber shop in the Carniceria is right down. That's so right down that way is his barber shop and uh, his butcher shop. Nice, man. You got everything around you. Yeah. Can't complain. Little, 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 little place of coffee over here. Oh yeah, what's the uh, what was that? What do you say, Cameron? Oh, the, yeah, uh, for all of you who come here and visit, it's like a rule. Public safety, number one. You do not have the right of way to anything, so you will get your kind run over if you step out at the crosswalk or anywhere and thinking that you're about to have some rights, because you will not. Right away, meaning crossing the street and everything. Don't think that the car is going to stop for you. So. Don't, like, because you're from the states or whatever country you're from and you're comfortable across the street and most people stop for you here they won't you just gotta be careful keep your head on a swivel and and even if it's a one-way road look both ways because they oftentimes a motorcycle will come up the wrong way super fast so there you go i actually almost got hit by a motorcycle one time i was crossing the the street at the light it had the green guy that i can walk that said that that, that i was able to cross and guess what i was walking and a motorcycle literally came like six miles an hour, zoom, right in front of me. Literally took out my legs. I almost took out my legs. It scared the crap out of me. So anyways, good rule. I like that, I like it. So now we're walking. Got a little cafe over here. Most people I'm noticing wearing the face mask. They're following the rules. I wanna put my face mask back on. And look at, got the new construction here. At, I think that one over there, I think, is only going to be like two apartments per half. So those apartments on the right-hand side that are complete, I think those are going to be really large, three bedrooms. So the great view. You mean this whole side right here is going to be one apartment, and this other no, side no, is going to be two? Like, two, split, split down yeah, the middle. So this will be. This will also be two, but on the other side, this is exactly the same. It's a flip. So on more the other side, it's less apartments. So smaller. more spacious apartments. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Because you have the elevator and all the, you know, the, the, on one side of the building, which takes away that middle space that the other side would get. All right, so then that goes back to what Cameron mentioned before about when he gets tired of this apartment he's living in now, he just moved to another apartment in a brand new place. And and I don't see the rent going up super high anytime in the future. All right, guys, looks like he, they have a library super close to where they live. Casa de la Literatura, San Germán. And that's pretty cool. So like I mentioned many times, uh, somos, most- Somos Barrio San Germán exactly most neighborhoods have libraries so it's very illiterate opportunities a lot of opportunities to for people to develop their minds here and i have friends who grew up and they went to public schools which is not the best schools public schools here in colombia but they spend a lot of time in the library and they're they learn they're self-taught they're super intelligent all right so now we're gonna walk up to a lookout point that they like to go to and can you see a lot of the city up here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a great view. All right, so y'all stay tuned. So like on the weekends, five or six, you'll have picnics. Okay. People out right here. Have In this green area. Yeah. Nice. So this is kind of like the little stroll that they, that they like to do after they eat. You know, it's, uh, you got the greenery. Stretch your legs. Stretch your legs, walk off the food. Very nice. I'm wearing my mask like this because if someone comes close to me, I can just slip it on real quick. Acá. Ahí, acá. Nosotros lo hemos hecho acá. Ellos corten el pasto ahí, ¿o no? Sí, eso sí. tiene corte. Sí. She was saying that on the weekends, families uh, do picnics in that little area right here. It's nice. What do you guys think so far? Nice little area. We're almost to the view. Check this out, guys. This is a nice little terrace here. We got the chairs. We got the nice towel or whatever this is, wood. It's like hardy plank or something. Yeah. Like rubber. Hardy, yeah, like rubber hardy plank. Beautiful views over here. So it's not... If you guys haven't seen the video where Cameron and Dora took me to visit Dora's family, in uh, La Aurora uh, houses, that has a better view than here, right? And those uh, 
200 bucks a month was it? Yeah, it's about 200 bucks a month rent. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's super cool. I think I, I titled it uh, No Gringo Goes Here. So check out that view, guys. Beautiful. That's one beautiful thing about Medellin. You got the mountains. You know, you're looking off, you see beautiful green mountains. I'm from Houston, Texas, so when I would look out, all I would see was just plainness and concrete. Okay, see this tree right here? What's that? That's a mango tree. Which one? Uh -huh. Both of them. Oh yeah, look. Okay, the mango. Is this on the mango? Mm -hmm. Wow, those are old. Mm -hmm. Old mango trees. You can see it's got a little fruit on it already, the green. So yeah, 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 yeah. And they, here in Medellin, there's a lot of fruit trees planted everywhere. And initially I thought it was for like the homeless, but my friend Marco, he corrected me. He said, no, they were originally planted for the birds, for the birds. But now it's super cool because there's food everywhere. There's mango trees, there's banana trees, there's papaya trees, lime, lime trees all over the place. So people who can't afford to buy it, they have it, their access. Got some working out over there. Come on, camera, get at it. Get at it, get Just at it. Go, go, go work out some push ups. There we go. There we go. That's all you need. Just your body weight and the desire to move. Yeah, your pet, like, like a whole gym. <laughs> he said, My weight's a lot. I said, Yeah, it's like a whole gym. <laughs> I'm playing, man. I'm playing with you. Camera's cool. We we understand each other. We understand our humor. We fam, baby. We're family already. And that's the beautiful thing about this channel, man. A lot of cool people, a lot of like-minded people are being attracted, and we're building a community in this channel. So, if you if you guys, any of you guys, been watching for a while and you haven't subbed, but you like my content, you like what I'm showing, go ahead and sub. Let's get to that thousand. I think we're at 750 at this moment, and uh, let's get to that thousand subs. It's my first goal. After that, next goal is 5,000. After that, it's 10,000. So let's keep growing together. Yeah. Check out that pool. That's oh, super yeah. nice. Yeah. This the other building has a pool. Uh huh. This building has a pool. Every building has a pool. Yeah, Everybody has a pool. a pool. Yep. And Medellin is all about balconies too. Everybody loves their balconies. And again, see how many apartments. Look how many empty apartments are. Mm hmm. And another funny thing is, see that sign, that yellow sign? That's with the owner, and it says Vendo and it has a phone number, but it's on like the 12th floor. So I don't know if you guys seen my other video I put out in Envigado showing an apartment tour, but there was like a small, super small sign up on the 20th floor for rent. I'm like, how the heck are people gonna see that? Like, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, guys, so after this, we're gonna go for a little bit of walk around the neighborhood and then we'll end the video. So stay tuned, it's almost done. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you guys something real quick that's also very interesting about Colombia, about Medellin. They have these, these houses here with a gate and a lot of apartments inside so that's a um i forget what it's called but it's 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 closed off with the fence and the barbed wire a lot of people like living in these areas because it's super safe uh with the with the gate at the end and they have, usually have um, a lot of pool playgrounds all kinds of activity within so it's almost like uh people with young families and they want to have their kids running around outside with having without having to be on top of them or watch them a lot like in the streets by themselves they move into places like this with the enclosed uh Dora, como se dice un lugar como este? Es como un apartamento que son cuánto una palabra. Conjunto cerrado. So it's a, in Spanish it's conjunto, un conjunto which is uh close people, close families. Which is a, a, a bunch of apartments closed off. That's what it means. And people started moving to places like this because it got kind of dangerous in the roads for kids to play on the street because of too many cars going by, too many motorcycles, also insecurity with um, what was happening in the past year in Medellin, unfortunately. So they started building these conjuntos, encerrados, uh, so the families could live here and the cerrados. Yeah. So the families could live here and the kids can go outside and play in the in the garden in between all these buildings and the parents who stay in the apartment not worry so much so for you guys who have families and want to move to Medellin and you want your kids to play outside more more secure it's a good option but even then watch your kids <laughs> it's not like how I was when I was back growing up back in the 80s and 90s man I ran loose in the neighborhood but that was back in those days man things were 
things were safer, right? And everybody was outside. Back in those days, guys, when I was a kid, the, the parents would go put the lawn chair in the front yard and talk to the other parents in the neighborhood together, you know, to kind of get together while the kids were playing the streets, soccer and football. I went back to the States. I went back to the States the last year to visit my, fa my family and I went to my old neighborhood and there was literally no kids in the streets. Everybody's inside. And this was not during quarantine. So things have changed. Anyways. Yeah, here it is, man. We're walking around. I guess we're going to this park over here. Hmm. Yeah, so anyways, there you go. Those kind of places are really cool for families. And they're taking me to this back alley part. I have no idea where we're going. Let's check out where we're going. Ardilla. La Ardilla, squirrel. That's beautiful. So squirrels here, guys, in Colombia and Medellin, they're red. That's the first one you've seen? Yes. Huh. They're really pretty, the squirrels. They're red and kind of furry. Like more fur. Check out. Let's see if we can get closer. Oh, he's got a rat. Oh, he's got, what is he got? This? No, that's not a rat. That's his baby. No, that's a baby squirrel, dude. Look at the, the, the tail. That's his, uh, that's mama squirrel with a baby. Wow, I've never seen that. Have y'all seen that, guys? It's got her baby. Yeah, let's go. I'm not sure if she's, if she's, is she, have you guys ever seen that before? A squirrel carrying the baby squirrel like that? Because she's not eating it. No, it's, I've never seen a squirrel carry the baby like that. Almost daughter. It's because the, the mother, the mother squirrel looked pretty stressed. She was looking at us, trying to protect her baby. So we're getting away from her so she can calm down. We don't want her to drop the baby. That would suck. I've never seen that, guys. And I've, and growing up in my, where I grew up in Houston, in the neighborhood, there were squirrels all over the place, right? In, in the never States. Seen, yeah. In the States, you see so many freaking squirrels. Have you ever seen a squirrel carry a baby Honestly, like I've been here for, you know, the, the, all the time I've been here, I've never seen a single critter of any type. No possum, no squirrel, no this, no that. So you haven't been to... Mimo, Mimo, venga. <laughs> hey, camera with the Spanish, man. He knows how to say, venga, come. come on, venga, come, come on. Come, let's do it. He knows come that. On, venga. De hello, de hello en paz. <laughs> uh, so, camera, you never been to La Castilla in Medellin yet? There's a bunch of squirrels there. You know what the La, La Castilla is, right? The castle here in Medellin? I haven't been yet, no, huh? So if you want to see squirrels, go to the castle. There's a lot of squirrels there. But I've never seen a squirrel carry a bear like that. It's pretty cool. Very interesting. All right, so we got a little park here. A little community park. We got a gym. Cameron, dude, this is all you need. I know, right there. How come you don't come here? Come on now. Not bad. But also, the birds right here, super intense. Oh, yeah, they're intense. And you know why? It's probably because they got nests around here, man. They got their nests here. Yeah. Which I like a lot of the birds. Yeah, we mentioned that in another video. Colombia is one of the most diverse countries with uh, bird, bird diversity, population, whatever. It looks like this kind of gyms are, are for body weight. It's not like the one I work out in. Yeah. Good stuff, though. Careful. All right, guys. Is there. What? What? Yeah, the little bird. So, Cameron, is there any more to see or we're ending here? Yeah, no, we're stuck here. We're good here. We're done? Yeah, we're going to go back this way. Okay, so we're done with the video? No, no, we're almost finished. We got more to see. One more stop. We got more to see, guys. Hang tight. Cameron and I were just talking about something kind of interesting, about how after living outside the United States in a different country like this, Colombia, and I live in Mexico as well, after experiencing that and the lifestyle and the cost of living, it's so hard for me to imagine ever living again in the States, you know, knowing what we can get here. And Cameron was totally in agreement right you're saying what were you saying about like, going back to the states to visit oh for me i mean I, I it would be more about visiting and doing the fun stuff i like to do you know my boat camping in the rockies out west but to go into a grind and actually living day to day my life is in the united states i just can't see it anymore right and cameron he works online as well so if anybody can figure out a way to make money online make those dollars and spend pesos and come over here you got you're, you're living a good life for Nothing. sure 20,000 yeah. a year, you look like a king. Right. Solo. Right. 
Yeah, twenty thousand dollars a year that you're living good, 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 good. I, I'm telling you, like to live comfortable, you need like thirteen hundred dollars a month or so, and that's living pretty comfortable. Well, I'll give you an idea for Dora and I before pre-COVID. Uh, our, our we our you know our monthly was we had our rent five fifty for all the stuff paid about one hundred and twenty five a week for groceries. And, 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 and you know, a little in, in, the, in the liquor. And then on Saturday, Friday and Saturday, we'd go out for the weekend. Friday night restaurant, El Poblado. Saturday night disco at La Setenta. The weekend was $100. Mm -hmm. So it was an effort to spend $2,000 a month. You gotta try hard. And, 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 if, and, and if we wanted to throw in a quick, you know, a three or four day weekend to Cartagena, $120 round trip tickets for both of us. $50 night hotel rooms. So you could do four days in Cartagena for 500 bucks for two of us. And Cartagena is a yeah, very nice fun. place. Yeah, or, or anywhere on the coast. So, right. Yeah, your dollar is just going to go so far and the value is so incredible because this is not a third world country. No. This country is as developed as anywhere that I've been. Especially Medellin. Especially this city is very developed. You got it. I mean, of course, when you first come and you've never been on the States ever, you're going to have the culture shock, especially if you don't speak Spanish. It's going to be a culture shock, but let it ride a bit, get used to it, and then you're going to be, you adjust pretty easy. How long does it take you to adjust? You know, a week. Yeah. But you've traveled <laughs> no. around. Yeah, I like to go and see places, and I open myself up for it, but it really took a couple of months to get used to all the noise and the hustle uh -huh. and just, you know, that, that kind of stuff, and, and uh -huh. to develop the patience. Uh -huh. you, got to, you have to be patient. Right. Right, the noise, that's a huge thing. Because when I go back to the States to visit my family, every time I go, I literally can't sleep for two or three days because it's too quiet. It's so quiet in the United States. I'm so used to the noise, it's almost like a white noise of all of me asleep. So I love it. Some people can't take it, can't stand it. How, how are you with the noise? I don't even hear it anymore. It's just part of the just you know, background. It's just so noisy. It's just like, life. Some it's people, just... I don't know why, but like some guys like have motorcycles the loudest possible ever. Ever. There's literally a motorcycle go down the road and I have to pause the TV because I can't hear what's going on and then unpause it when they're when they've gone. You know, so yeah, and the patience is huge too. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but in the market in the in the store, grocery store, what takes uh, a cashier to get through three or four people in the line, uh, in the States probably get twenty people through. And they don't even in the States, you guys we have like huge shopping carts full of food, right? And everything. Here's a very, they, they buy super, probably like not even a, a third of what they buy here, uh, buy in the States, and it still takes so long for them to check out. There's no rush. It's crazy. So if you guys come here, just understand that and have patience. Are you gonna go crazy? Are you gonna go crazy? You know? Dang! <laughs> I thought you were speaking German. I thought, Ciencia, what the? Paciencia. He's trying. He's trying, man. He's good. He's doing good. They, they, they communicate well. All right, guys. So we're walking around. And hold on, y'all. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So we did a little walk around his neighborhood. It's beautiful. Tell me in the comments what you guys think. Uh, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Dora, for inviting me to their apartment. They fed me. Dora made an amazing meal. It was delicious. And I've been, I've been uh, sustaining on my cooking at home, which is basically eggs and uh, meat. So I was very happy to have the food, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, anything else to say? Ciao. Welcome. Ciao. Ciao, bye-bye. Ciao, bye-bye. Ciao, bye-bye. See you on the next video. Y'all take care. Yeah.